Hey, what's up YouTube? Your boy Chris in the Cali and Take Garage. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to repack the bearings on a Can-Am RT622 trailer. I looked on YouTube and I cannot find any videos on how to repack the bearings. So in this video, I'm going to show you guys exactly how I do it. Let's get started. I put the jack just under the suspension where the wheel hub could turn. I'm gonna use a mallet and a flat screwdriver and basically I wanna remove the dust cap that's located on the front of the wheel hub. I'm just gonna place it in between the dust cap and the wheel hub and I'm just gonna tap it lightly I'm going to rotate it around, try to pry the dust cap off. And just looking at how much oil is in this wheel hub, I could already tell that it's probably not going to need greasing. I want to wipe some of the oil away. You have a carter pin that goes in between this castle nut that has to be removed. Just want to bend back the carter pin. You want to get that carter pin where you can slide it out. The carter pin prevents this nut from backing off of the axle. So you want to remove this carter pin. Okay, you want to take this carter pin out, lay it in your parts bucket. And you can see it's actually hand tightened. It was just hand tightened. Okay, so I'm gonna untighten the nut. And now that you have the nut off, the hook should just come off and the bearings will fall out in my hands. Okay, so before we pull them off, let's look at what's on here. Might be a washer. You have a washer that goes on a outer part of the axle and here is your bearing those bearings look nice and greased and you also have another bearing on the back side we may have to take a seal 
to remove the bearing on the back side. I'm gonna show you how to get the bearings out of the back of the wheel hub. First, I gotta remove this seal and I wanna remove this seal without damaging it because I'm gonna put the seal back into the hub. You could actually replace it and buy new seals, rear seals for the hub, but if I can get it out without damaging it, I can actually uh, put it back in here. So to do so, you wanna use wood. You don't wanna use metal because metal will damage this seal. Metal. I like so. to take some wood against the floor. So I'm just shoring it up with wood to get it off the ground. And you want to use wood when you do this, otherwise you could damage you could damage the seal. And you don't want to go straight in, you want to go at an angle and just kind of hit the corners. Get a couple of taps. Move it over to the next corner. Okay, now you see the seal is out. You want to make sure that the bearings are still flow freely. And you want to make sure that the seal is not damaged. It's not bent. You want to make sure it's still uh, perfectly. Okay, make sure that is in there. So now... Okay, now we got the bearings out. Okay. Set that to the side. We're going to go ahead and get this cleaned up. I'm going to show you how to get it clean. The best way to clean is these bearings is with straight gasoline. And you want to do this in a well ventilated area. Always wear rubber gloves and do this in a well ventilated area. Now I'm going to take a toothbrush. I want to clean this old grease off of here. Kind of scrub it around. You want to get all the old grease out of the bearings. Okay, Let's clean the old grease, clean the seal, the rear seal, and once you get it all cleaned up, you basically want to repack it with fresh barren grease. Just slosh it around. Make sure all of the old grease is off. You want to check all the rollers on the bearings. Make sure that they're not broken or missing or damaged. So now I can transfer the bearings over to some fresh gasoline. Now some mechanics will tell you not to reuse the old seals or the old bearings, they may even tell you that you need to go ahead and change them. And that's fine, but I like to uh, reuse my bearings and seal if there is nothing wrong with them. So these look pretty good from what I can tell. I don't see any damage, but you do what's best for you. If you wanna go ahead and change them, I'll reuse mine. So now that I have the bearings all clean, I'm going to go ahead and take my air hose and just blow out any uh, excess oil or gasoline.
So now I'm going to take this opportunity. I want to measure the thickness of the spindle in case I decide to come back later with a um, greasable with greasable hubs. I don't have to do it now. It would be a lot easier in the future to put greasable hubs on here, which would be no problem. But uh, I just want to get the measurements so I'll know in the future if I want to change these out with some greasable uh, hubs. Okay, I'm going to show you guys how to repack these bearings. I'm using some uh, premium heavy duty grease. You guys could use um, any kind of grease that you think would work better for your application. I just like Traveler's Premium Heavy Duty Grease. It's ideally suited for high temperature wheel bearings and automotive chassis parts. Consult to your owner's manual for proper lubrication. So I'm just going to be uh, going back with some Traveler's Premium Heavy Duty Grease. It's what I like to use. And how I like to do this, I just like to take a glob. Okay, I just like to take a glob, put it in my hand, like so. Okay, and basically what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna force the grease into the bottom of the barrel, into the bottom of the bearings all the way around. So I'm gonna force grease into the bottom of the bearings all the way around. So I'm gonna slowly push it in. You want to do a little bit at a time. Notice how I'm holding it. I got my finger through the bearing. I'm just kind of pushing in, pushing downward. And I'm forcing the, the grease to go up inside of the bearings. You just want to take your time. Use rubber gloves. It makes the process a lot easier. Spin it around just a little bit. Move downstream a little bit more just take little bitty bites don't try to take a lot because you want to be able to make sure that the, the grease is getting inside of the bearings rotate it around and like I said you can go with greasable hubs where you can just grease it with the grease gun and you don't even have to do it this way and some of you guys may even like to use a barren greaser tool which I've used those I didn't have much success with them I just like to do it by hand because I know it's done right at that point now I'm gonna put two finger in, two fingers in and spin it around make sure you get plenty of grease within those rollers Shops charge good money to do this, but if you can do this yourself, you can save yourself a, a lot of money knowing that it's done right, it's done correctly, and you can save some money doing it yourself. I would probably grease them uh, probably every three to 5,000 miles to be on the safe side. Some guys never grease theirs. And if these bearings seize up on the axle, break down on you while you're on the interstate or at the worst possible time at night. And you don't want to be dragging your trailer down the interstate. Go ahead and roll those rollers. Make sure you're getting good grease in those rollers. Force that grease down in there. Okay, now, looking at the back of the hub, these bearings should be the same. L44649, so they're the exact same. I'm going to just kind of tap the rear seal back in the back of the hub with a rubber mallet. Just want to take your time. You don't want to bend that seal. 
just making sure you don't bend the seal and now she's ready to go back in on the spindle okay now I got the the rear seal back in along with the bearing the rear bearing slide it push it all the way up you want to take the front bearing Push it all the way in. You want to take your flat washer. Notice how it's beveled on the front and flat on the back. You want to put it flat on the inside. Push her in. Now I can come back with the, with the castle nut. And notice the slits are on the outer side because you want to get the carter pin inside the slits. So I'm gonna go ahead and just tighten these down. And you can actually tighten these by hand. You don't want them too tight because you don't want to damage the bearings. And get it tightened by hand. So if the hole it's not lining up with the slits. You make it back it back a little bit. Make sure it don't rock. Okay. Now I can take my carter pin. Bump it back down. Spread it open. And do the other side the same way. And that's to prevent the the castle nut from back and off the axle. There's a rocket, make sure it's good and snug. Okay, this is how you grease your bearings on your Can-Am RT622 trailer. The only thing remains is to do the other side. You're going to do it the exact same way. If you guys have any questions or any comments, feel free to put them down in the comment section below. If you like this video, be sure to hit the like button. If you haven't already, subscribe to my YouTube channel. This is your boy Chris out in the Caliente garage just showing you how to repack the bearings on a Can-Am RT622 trailer and I will talk to you guys later see you and now I can go ahead and blow off any, any trash or gasoline